Hi, welcome to Citizen Survival Plan and welcome back if you've been here before. In today's discussion, I'm going to talk about whether you should get into GMRS or ham radio. Now, people ask me this all the time, what is the best? In my opinion, the repeater systems are very similar. Ham radio can operate on some different bands via their repeaters than GMRS, but all in all, the range on the repeaters, in my opinion, really isn't all that different. Unless you are using a ham radio that is using a linked system via radio signals. GMRS can link via the internet, which I don't care about and I think is not a very good idea. But we are going to get into ham radio repeater linking a little bit later in the video. GMRS repeaters can have up to a 100 mile range or 140 mile range on the really good ones. Typically, you're going to see 30 or 40. That is going to be the same with ham. Now, this is where it is completely dependent on where you live. The repeaters can be sparse, meaning there's not a lot of them around sometimes. In my case, there's GMRS repeaters to the north, east, west, and south of me. So I can access radio communications within a hundred or so miles around my location, which is really good. You know, up, down, left, right, I got it all. Some people have no repeaters in their area for GMRS. So getting your license might be a wasted amount of money and time. Also, another issue that I have with GMRS repeaters over the ham system, there are radio Karens big time in GMRS. If you look on mygmrs.com, you can see a bunch of repeaters in a lot of instances, but they are private or people want you to pay them to get on them. I will never understand this. I put up a repeater simply for other people and me to use. Radio was supposed to be like that and I don't understand the reasoning behind this or why you have to join a group. It's a repeater. And if you know what you're doing, you can tone scan these and access them and post the tones on the internet or whatever. So it's sort of a wasted endeavor to keep them private the way that people do, but they do, and I don't know why they're doing it. Ham radio does not suffer this problem, actually, which is interesting because hams really, really love rules, and they love talking about rules. But you see more of this privacy within GMRS. So let's get back on track really quick. Let's say you are looking to get into radio and you don't want to take a test and you just want to get GMRS, but there's no repeaters in the area, so th there's no reason to get a GMRS license. This is when you are going to have to get a ham radio license. You are going to have to study for this and you're going to have to take a test. And in my opinion, I'm pretty good with radio. The test was pretty difficult for me despite all of the ham radio operators on the internet saying that a two-year-old or whatever they comment can pass this test. I thought it was difficult and you're going to have to actually study for it and take time to go pass. One big benefit to ham radio is the network is way better. Ham radio is an older system and it's been around longer than GMRS has at least been popular. So there's way more repeaters and ham radio is not plagued. And this is weird for me to say. It's not plagued by radio Karens that don't want you on the repeater. If you get a ham radio license, you will be welcomed onto pretty much any repeater. There is no private this or you have to become a member to get on that. I rarely see that in ham radio. Does it exist? Probably, but I don't see much of it at all. The ham radio repeaters can operate on a little bit more power and they can use some other bands. They can use VHF or UHF. They can pick what they want their repeater to be on depending on the terrain that they're in. So ham repeaters have the potential to go a little bit further, but in my opinion, the GMRS on UHF is 
really equal to what the ham repeaters can do, in my opinion. Now, is there some ham repeater out there that can go all over the place that's got a 200-mile range? Probably. I just don't know about it, but I'm sure they're out there. The range is going to be very, very similar for repeaters, whether you're using GMRS or ham. Now, one other thing about ham radio repeaters that is beneficial over GMRS is they can be linked. And I'm not talking about linking via the internet. I'm talking about linking via radio signal. This is really complicated to explain right now, but they will actually have towers that can connect with each other. So your voice can connect from one tower to the next and it can go up and down a much larger area via a connected network. Some GMRS radio repeaters are linked via the internet and that is something that I don't care about because again, we're using this on, at least in this channel, we always talk about it in the realm of emergency communications, not as a hobby. So to recap, <laughs> If you get your GMRS license and pay the $35, it's totally worth it if there's a ton of repeaters in your area and you really don't need to expand to ham radio if you have a lot of good GMRS infrastructure in your area. If you have none, you're gonna have to pass that test and you're going to have to get into ham radio. There is almost nowhere in the United States where there isn't at least one or two ham radio repeaters within range of where you're at. I program radios for people all the time, and even in the middle of nowhere, there will be at least one repeater that somebody can connect to. With GMRS, the repeaters can be scarce depending on where you are. I hope this video answered your question and was helpful. We'll see you in the next video.